Hello, in today's video we'll be replacing a starter on the Chevy Impala, which randomly would not want to crank. I'll have a video linked at the top or at the end of the video on things to check before replacing the starter, which may cause your car not to crank. The first thing you'll want to do is disconnect the battery. For this we'll need a 10mm socket to loosen and remove the battery terminal. I always remove the negative because it is a safer terminal to remove. And you'll want to tuck it away so it doesn't somehow touch the battery. We can now get underneath the car. And we'll have to remove this bracket which is held on by three bolts which we'll need a 15mm socket for. I use a short socket to remove this first bolt. And for the second and third bolt I use a deep socket. Instead of trying to spin off the remainder of the bolt, I'll use a long extension. This works really well in this area. Now we'll have to remove this plastic cover which is held on by one 10mm bolt. Once we get the bolt removed, we can just slide off the plastic cover. To access the starter connections, you'll want to slide back this rubber boot. This is a better view of our two starter connections. We'll need a 13mm socket to remove this starter battery terminal nut. I prefer using a small ratchet so you have enough room to actually use the ratchet function. Once you got it loose you can remove the rest by hand. This starter terminal has two wires attached to it. So when reinstalling it, you'll want to be sure to reinstall both. And now we can remove the starter crank connection. To do this, you'll want to lift the tab and slide the connector back and off. And now we can remove the two bolts holding the starter. For this first bolt I use a long extension plus a short extension with a 15mm socket. For the second bolt I use the same thing minus the short extension.
You'll want to hold the starter up while removing the second bolt so that it doesn't fall and so it makes the bolt easier to remove. The starter is now off. To completely slide out the starter, I remove it from this area. But you want to be careful not to damage your lower radiator hose when you're removing it. Now that it's off, we'll be back after this message from the kitty. You'll want to make sure to match your old starter to your new one before installing it. The first one I ended up getting did not match. Now to reinstall the new starter is just the reverse. You'll want to put it back in through the same way. Once you got the new starter into position, we can go ahead and reinstall the bolts, starting with the easier one of the two. You want to snug it up as much as you can by hand before reinstalling the other bolt. Once you got that first bolt snugged up, this will make installing the second bolt a little easier. We can now go ahead and tighten the bolts with the ratchet. You'll want to alternate the tightening until you get them both fully seated. Now that the starter is fully seated, we can go ahead and fully tighten it and torque it. Next we can reinstall the starter crank connection and then reinstall the two cables attached to the starter battery post. Now we can reinstall the nut, then snug it up by hand, and fully tighten it with the ratchet. You want to be careful not to over tighten it. It's only 89 inch pounds, so you don't want to put too much force. We can now recover the terminal with the boot. Next comes a plastic cover that's held on by one bolt. And now we can tighten it with the ratchet. And now the bracket plus the three bolts. Now we just need to connect the battery. 
But for me, I still gotta reinstall this lower panel because I removed this to get better viewing angles for this video. But I think the starter can be done good by removing these three 10 millimeter bolts. We can now just reinstall the negative terminal and tighten it. That just about does it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, please click that like button and help support my video and channel. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell.